They are now everywhere in Toronto. 40 signs on the sides of buses and streetcars, all asking some pertinent questions about life that only God can answer. The man behind this divine initiative is David Harrison, founder and CEO of Bus Stop Bible Studies. When they're just asking those God life questions, um, that everybody has, and we re really just hope that it will initiate some conversation. Among the questions raised are, God, do you love me? Is everyone forgiven? And even, God, why am I here? But the point isn't just to ask the questions. Harrison hopes this will cause those that see the ads to look into finding the answers. It directs them either to the new website we established, which is answerme.ca. Um, or we have a mobile phone website um, so people can text a message and they'll get an auto response which will typically include a scripture verse and again direct them to our mobile website so we get those tech savvy youth. In fact it was a group of tech savvy youth that came up with the latest bus stop bible study marketing campaign. All advertising students that? from Centennial College in Toronto, David Harrison asked them to come up with the questions and the design. We spoke to two students from the group, Karsten Chung and Stephanie Conley. So tell me guys how you got involved with Bus Stop Bible Studies. Started off in copywriting class when our teacher told us about it. She says it's an opportunity to get some experience in like some actual hands-on experience in the industry. And so what's it been like, Steph? Awesome. I haven't seen my ad yet, but I've been getting good feedback and I'm going to make my way downtown soon and try to check out the ads. Apparently everyone likes them. So. The students from Centennial College, they were very, very creative. Um, we just saw one of the streetcars went by, it's, what's for dinner, God? Right? Well, of course, it's, it's a tongue-in-cheek question, but uh, when you read the scriptures, and one of the most popular passages in scripture is, you know, when Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And anybody who answers, I will come in and sup with them and they with me. And of course, that leads to that whole thing of the intimacy of a relationship with Jesus Christ that one can have, literally, figuratively, having dinner together. <laughs> but this is far from being Harrison's introduction into the world of transit advertisement. He's been posting signs inside public transportation vehicles for the past three years, filled with scriptures and life questions each panel is sponsored by a church, organization, or individual, hoping that these signs will initiate thought-provoking conversation on city buses from Toronto to Vancouver and many other cities in between. We now estimate that those studies have been seen over a half a billion times cumulatively, um, which is astronomical numbers. We have, in effect, a captive audience. The typical commuter in Toronto, they'll spend close to an hour on public transit in any given day. And people are quite receptive to it. Um, we get virtually no complaints. So we thought we would find out for ourselves what people think about bus stop Bible studies being posted in public transit vehicles. And the reviews were mixed. Would you call that number, the phone number there, if you were looking for God? No, um, because... Uh... I'm not, uh, I believe just in me. <laughs> okay. What do you think it's a good way of advertising faith on the subway or on the bus? Sure, I guess. Why? Uh, I don't know, I guess uh, whatever getting your message out there and advertising the subway is a good way to do it. Do you think it's a good way of advertising faith? I do. you are a Christian? I do. I do think it is a good thing. Why? Why? Yeah. Because anything that has a good message that's out there in the world is a good thing. Maybe religion is one of those things if people look for it, they'd find it themselves. Maybe it doesn't need to be advertised. He was their top sale. We caught up with David later that day at the printers <laughs> where he was having his next batch of signs made. We shared with him some of the comments we received and while he isn't afraid to answer the critics, he believes firmly there is a place for faith in the public square and the public bus. Um, I would say it's just one way of sharing one's faith um, and just in my own personal relationship with God there was the point of what I call a point of crisis where you decide I can't go on without God 
it's that personal contact that God has with us at just the right moment. So with all these scriptures that we put up at just the right moment, God will use it to um, answer somebody's question. And we have testimonies of that time and time again. Brad Farkas has been a Toronto transit driver for over 20 years and is also a Christian. He's seen the interior bus stop Bible studies effectiveness since they started appearing in his buses years ago. Uh, I'm very grateful for it because it's changed my life as a Christian. Um, give me a better view of transportation with ministry and that's what my prayer was for years is stumbling onto something that I can actually be part of for the city of Toronto to hear the gospel. But as soon as we start talking about sharing God on public transit, there are those who feel they should have the right to share their lack of faith in God on the same platform as well. Over a year ago, the Toronto transit system was approached by a group of atheists that wanted to post a sign of their own on their vehicles as well, following a similar campaign in London, England. Both Harrison and Farkas saw the new signs as a welcome opportunity for discussion. The atheist situation was a good thing because I think it's time that we're all challenged and be more open with our faith, whether you're an atheist or whatever faith you are, I think it's time we challenged ourselves and made sure we're in the faith. And so it gives an opportunity to have the truth come out and a challenge because that's how the gospel was promoted because of persecution uh, in the early days. And so now when you have challenges, that's when the real fire comes out, the truth. It's a free and democratic society. People should be allowed to say their piece and without fear of offense, so long as they themselves are not offending others. And that is, you know, uh, anti-racial comments or anything like that. But uh, no, we, we, we welcome discussion because again, it gets people thinking about eternity, their life, what happens hereafter. We're only here for a very short time. And to think that the light switch just gets flicked off at the end of it all, I'm sorry. <laughs> a few weeks after David and his team had released their new signs and we had interviewed him, one of their signs caught some unwelcome publicity. We caught up with David to get an update. We, as you saw on the, uh, the panels that we already put up on the outsides of the streetcars, uh, they've been up for three weeks, um, nothing of any consequence whatsoever. And then um, the Toronto Star did a piece on one of the uh, panels that were put up. And uh, as the saying goes, it went viral. <laughs> and one of the new exterior panels in particular that were placed on the sides of streetcars created a stir. It was written by a Centennial College student. And uh, the question was, does God care if I'm gay? Um, and of course, we answered that question scripturally. Um, again, just focusing on the love of God. But uh, of course you get the, I say the bigots on both sides come out of the woodwork and, um, and it just became a distraction. But we'll the campaign see. continues. The campaign continues. So we've just taken that one sign down. There's uh, 19 other really good questions that we got up. Um, and again, it's, it's these life questions as we say, you know, God, do you love me? Um, stuff like that. God, are you there? God, do you hear me? and we try and answer those and just encourage people, as I say, to consider their relationship to God through Christ. If you would like to find out more about Bus Stop Bible Studies and how you can get involved, go to our website at 100huntley.com. In Toronto, Ontario, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.